Leroy's Pokemon Black and White Walkthrough, Part 3. So once you're finished up in Accumula Town, you can head west towards Route 2, and you get to go through this cool little building, um, which is a new thing in black and white, just a cool visual thing. You get to see, like, the big side-scrolling thing with the route that you're going into. Um, anyways, this is Route 2, so yeah, now we're making some progress. We're already on Route 2. And our cross transceiver's ringing. And guess who it is? It's our mom, checking up on us. I mean, if she's going to be checking up on us like every 10 minutes, it's going to be super annoying, but she's actually going to hang up because, believe it or not, she is right there. Yeah, she's been following you around the entire game, apparently. Well, I guess we've only been going for like 15 minutes, but yeah, she's been following us around. Um, and she actually has a gift for us. It's the running shoes, because believe it or not, in the world of Pokemon, unless you have a pair of running shoes, your character is incapable of running. You must maintain walking pace at all times, unless you have the running shoes. Then you have the option of actually moving quickly by holding down the B button. So thank goodness we finally have our running shoes. Um, unfortunately, we're still not capable of jumping, so yeah, we can't hop over ledges. So yeah, maybe there's like a pair of jumping shoes that will come out like years from now. That would be some pretty high-tech stuff, wouldn't it? Anyways, this person's going to say that Pokemon battles are serious affairs. You can't run away. Of course we can run away from wild Pokemon just like that. It's only trainer battles that you can't run away from. Speaking of trainer battles, we got one right up here. And yeah, I'm just going to keep cutting out wild battles because no one likes them, and I don't fight them anyways. Um, yeah, here's a trainer. A trainer catches another trainer's eyes. That is the start of a Pokemon battle, because even if they look you right in the eye and you don't want to battle, I mean, too bad, you have to battle them anyways. That's just how it works. Um, yeah, early on, the trainer battles are easy. They're never really that hard throughout the entire game. The only challenging battles are going to be, like, maybe rival battles um, and gym fights, and then Elite Four battles. Regular trainers are going to be pretty easy to beat. Um, however, they do give out good experience, so they are definitely worth fighting. You will want to fight all the trainers in the game. Um, they give out a whole lot of experience, so if you want to level up, make your Pokemon stronger, you just got to fight all these weakling trainers. Um, so yeah. And you might have noticed my Porky was actually missing a few hit points at the start of the battle. I think I forgot to heal in between videos, so... Oh well, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, we just kill one Pat Rat and we get all the way up to level 9. And learn Odor Sleuth, which is not that great of a move, but... Yeah, leveling up is very easy early on in the game. I would recommend actually fighting some of the wild battles in the grass. They're actually kind of useful early on. Um, talk to this guy, he's gonna do something amazing! He can jump over a ledge, so you can jump down ledges, you just can't get back up, so... If you jump down, you gotta go all the way back around, which is kind of annoying. Anyways, let's go ahead and use our potion to heal up Tepig's hit points, because I bought a lot of potions, so I might as well use them. And we can continue on with Route 2. If you're wondering what new Pokémon are on Route 2... Um, I don't think this guy talks to you. If you're, no, if you're wondering what Pokemon are on Route 2, it's basically the exact same, only now you can find the new Pokemon Purloin, which we've actually ran into already when fighting N. And I believe this girl here has a Purloin also. So this is a good chance to talk about it. Um, Purloin is a Dark-type Pokemon. It really struggles stat-wise. It has good speed when it evolves, but its defenses are terrible and its attacking stats aren't that great. On top of that, it doesn't have a good move pool. Um, it doesn't even learn any, like, good moves until, like, the 40s, so you're going to be really stuck with crappy moves and bad stats, which is why I really would not recommend Pearl 1. Um, very early on in the game, it's actually somewhat useful, but as you get going, it doesn't really stay up to par with everything else, so... Um, Purloin, which evolves into Lyperd, is kind of a bad dark type. There are way, way better dark types out there, let me tell you. A lot of good dark types out there. This is not one of them, so unless you're up for a cool challenge, um, I would pass on Purloin. So yeah, that's that, and let's move on here, getting through the grass. Yeah, wild Pokemon are so annoying. I always just run away from them, I don't really care about the experience. Anyways, this guy, judging by what he just said, most likely has a lily pup. Um, so yeah, we're pretty much just seeing all the standard basic Pokemon from these trainers here. Again, Lillipup and Patrat can be found in this route. And like I said before, Lillipup's the only one I'd really highly recommend out of the bunch. Um, so let's go ahead and try to take care of this thing. 
Yeah, Tackle, Ember, both do pretty good damage. I'm not really sure which one does more, um, because Ember's a bit more powerful on Tepig, but Tepig has higher physical attack, so it's just kind of a toss-up. I'd probably just be going back and forth, seeing what does a little more. I mean, it's probably not even going to make a difference. Yeah, it's basically the exact same. Um, anyways, yeah, we are just, like, getting up levels quickly. We're going to be at level 10 already, getting into the new city. Actually, probably even higher than that. Ooh, critical hit! Nice! On the last turn when I didn't need it, which always happens to me for some reason. And there we go! Porky's at level 10. If you did decide to catch another Pokemon on your team, um... You'll probably be, you'll obviously be lower on levels, but it's actually nice because you can get both your Pokemon up levels very quickly early on, so it's not really too much of a hassle to add a lower level Pokemon on your team. Alright, come over here and you can grab a potion, and then I believe there's like a Pokeball or something. Ooh, aren't I a genius predicting that? Alright, Pokeball, Potion, the two most basic items in the game, basically. Um, so yeah, that is it for Route 2. You can head up here into the new city! Or maybe you'll get stopped by Bianca. I mean, we only first fought them, like, what, two videos ago? And now they're already back for more. Well, Bianca, at least. Sharon will actually be fighting, too, in a little bit, believe it or not. But, yeah. Um, like I said, you do fight your two rivals, like, frequently, very frequently throughout the game. And, yeah, she's already going to challenge you again before you can even get into the next city. So, she's going to have this Lily Pup on her team. It's only level 6, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, no matter what starter you chose, she will have this slowly pop, and then she'll just have the Pokemon she had earlier on in the game. Which should also be very easy to kill. Ooh, nice! Critical hit! Now that's what I'm talking about, a critical hit on the turn where I actually could use it. So, Lily Pup goes down, and yeah, the battle against Bianca is just a piece of cake because her starter Pokemon's weak to you, and by now you probably have a move like Ember, Bubble, or Vine Whip to take care of it. So in my case, I have Ember. Um, yeah, so Bianca is actually just a pretty easy battle. Even though she's like a quote-unquote boss fight or whatever, I mean, it's really easy. Especially this early on in the game when everything's like level 7. Ooh, you got a potion! Well, someone's been spending their money. Wow. I don't really care, though. You're still gonna die. I'm actually surprised the potion healed all of her hit points. Her Snivy must be pretty low on HP. I mean, heck, my Tepig has got 35 hit points, but then again, um, the Tepig line actually gets a lot of HP. Definitely a lot more than Snivy gets, but Snivy has good defenses, so whatever. There's all those even trade-offs throughout all the starters anyways. Alright, so Tepig is up to level 11, which is pretty nice. We are definitely going to be set for the next gym, or the first gym fight, actually, I should say. Anyway, she says I'm a tough cookie, and then she's going to say bye-bye. I don't know why she's going that way. Like, if she really wanted to make progress, you would think she'd go into Striaton City, but, um, whatever. Anyways, here's an item you can grab right off the bat. It's an X-Speed. And actually, I think it's pronounced Striaton City, not Striaton, Striaton City, so yeah. Um, anyways, this dude right here is going to give you a Pokeball. Yeah, I'm just... Or no, he gives you a Great Ball, even better than a Pokeball. Wow, isn't it our lucky day? So yeah, basically Great Balls, um, exact same thing, except they're more effective. They will catch Pokemon more often, so rare, higher level Pokemon are easier to get with Great Balls. Anyways, this creepy dude just kind of like, I don't know, he's just loitering around over here behind this building, and he'll give you a Dusk Ball, um, another type of Pokeball. Dusk Balls work better in dark areas, so like in caves, Dusk Balls work very well, very high catch rate. Anyways, I think there's one more item. I'm just, like, running into people. There's one more item we can grab over here in this little cool garden fountain area. Seriously, I just keep running into, like, all these bushes. Um, anyways, well, oh, here it is. Okay. And it's a Great Ball. So, yeah, we get two Great Balls and a Dusk Ball. So that's pretty nice. So I think that's it for items. Um, at least outside of... Well, yeah, there's one more item we can grab in this building right here. But before we do that, um, the gym is right here. It's closed right now. We can't go in just yet. The Dream Yard is over here. We will be covering that probably in the next video. But for now, we're just going to heal up at the Pokemon Center. All right, we are ready to go. Let's head inside this building right here, which is actually the school. Yes, the school of Pokemon. Wouldn't that be awesome in real life? Um, yeah, talk to this dude. He's going to give you a little quiz. Which of the following items cures poison? Hmm, does a Paralyze Heal cure poison? No, I think an Antidote cures poison. Yeah, these are really easy. 
So, um, he says, ooh, if a paralyzed heal cures paralysis, then what cures sleep? Huh, well, judging by common sense, let's go with awakening. Yeah, there we go. He gives you a full heal. A full heal heals all status problems, whether it be poison, paralysis, sleep, um, freeze, burn, whatever. So yeah, and here's Sharon. Sharon's like studying up in the school of Pokemon. He's like, ooh, I'm gonna be a master of all this stuff. Um, yeah, Sharon just... I mean, Bianca's just like dawdling around. Sharon's like, you know, he's serious business. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna study my way to victory. And then he's gonna challenge you to a battle. So if you're ready to go, you can take on Sharon. So yeah, right off the bat, we get to fight Bianca and Sharon for a second time. Um, and yeah, Sharon's not messing around. He's just gonna start off with a starter Pokemon. Like, yeah, screw those other weak, crappy Pokemon. Let's just go with my Oshawa right off the bat. So he's gonna have the Pokemon that you're weak to, which makes things kind of difficult because he's probably gonna have a move that's super effective against you. Um, so something to watch out for. If you did catch another Pokemon like a Lillipup, now's probably a good time to send it in, but... Um, if you think you can take it on by yourself, I mean, well, you probably should be able to. It's only at level 8, so it's not too bad. I mean, even if you're like me with just one Pokemon, you'll be up at level 11 or so, so... You should be fine. Anyways, he's got an Oran Berry on it to restore some health. And so far, all he's doing is using Tail Whip. He's not even going for the bubble, so Porky's just gonna dominate this thing. Yeah, your last chance, and you use Tail Up again, so you are a failure, sir. You're spending too much time studying up on all this random Pokemon crap that you forget to use your common sense and attack me with your bubble. I mean, isn't that the first thing I teach you? If you have a super effective move, you should probably use it. Alright, so anyways, he's going to send out his Purloin. Um, actually, Bianca got the better trade-off for the second Pokemon to go along with the starter, but... Yeah, Purloin is obviously not going to be that hard to beat. Wow, all those Tail Whips to lower my defenses and Scratch still only manages to do 8 hit points. That's just embarrassing. Alright, so Purloin goes down and we have defeated Sharon. I see, losing to you means I still have a lot to learn. Yeah, buddy, you still have a lot to learn. You better hit those books up and read every last thing written on this chalkboard. <laughs> Alright, then he's going to give you some Oran Berries that you can used to attach to your Pokemon, and they will restore some health, which is pretty nice early on in the game. Um, you'll probably want to use it for the gym fight. Um, so yeah, he's going to talk about that stuff, and I think that's probably going to wrap things up for this episode. We got everything done here in Striaton City. Um, of course, for the gym battle and stuff, but we got a nice overlook of the city. So next time, we'll head into the Dream Yard and hopefully get inside this gym here and take on the first gym leader. That's all coming up next time. I'll see you all then. Stay tuned for more.